Food Heals Podcast, Episode 33. And anyway, silver has been um, phenomenal. Uh, it basically builds up your immune system. And Sex it builds up your immune system too. Sure. I just wanted to say that. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In real cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stressed. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. Welcome to the Food Heals Podcast. I'm Allison Melody. I'm Susie Hardy. And our guest today is Miriam Hinane, investigative journalist, documentary and television producer, and professional researcher. She is most well known for directing the documentary The Vanishing of the Bees and running the website honeycolony.com. But first, we have a special announcement. Yes, we have a new swag bag winner. Woohoo! Woo! I'm going to read her review. Can't wait. <laughs> I heard about this podcast through the Rich Roll podcast. It's been a wonderful and fantastic addition to my podcast repertoire, and I find that I listen to it first over all my other downloads. I can relate to the Food Heals theory as I suffered from a debilitating disorder called interstitial cystitis, or IC, also known as painful bladder syndrome. I healed myself through diet and natural holistic approach to my health. I turned my back on conventional treatments and did what was good for my physical, mental, and spiritual well-being, and it paid off. I'm so glad that Allison and Susie are spreading the word, and their podcast reinforces a lifestyle that I believe in and everyone can benefit from. Thank you, Allison and Susie, for this organic, holistic, amazingly insightful content you produce each time you hit record. Namaste. That's amazing. I love that. Namaste. Namaste. And congratulations on getting through that disorder. You know, painful bladder syndrome sounds awful. Yeah. So congratulations on doing that. So congratulations, Jill Russell. Your swag bag is on its way. Yay. So first, before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about our sponsor today. Kristen Lajeunesse, who we had on a prior episode. Please go back and listen to her episode if you haven't, because she's fantastic. She wrote a book called Will Travel for Vegan Food. It's a memoir. It's really good. Susie and I have both read it. We really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It's funny. It's about love. It's about food. It's just a journey. A journey. You know, and she travels across the U.S. and her goal is to eat at every vegan restaurant in the U.S. Over two years of 48 states and 547 restaurants and travels 39,000 miles. And she finally completed her mission, wrote a book about it, and she's giving our listeners a great discount. We're going to tell you what the discount is later in the show. It's also sponsored by Whitney Lauritsen, the eco-vegan gal, and her amazing new book, Healthy Organic Vegan on a Budget, which will teach you the skills to meal plan effectively, shop like an expert, find discounts on organic food, and so much more. We'll let you know how to get these discounts on these products later in the show. Next up, our interview with Miriam. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. Welcome to the Food Heals Podcast. Our guest today is Miriam Hanane. In 2010, Miriam's 15-year career as an investigative journalist, entrepreneur, and producer hit a milestone with the release of her award-winning documentary, Vanishing of the Bees, which was narrated by Ellen Page. It also marked her directorial debut. She has more than 20 years' experience working as an investigative journalist, documentary and television producer, and professional researcher. Her credits include producing documentaries for the BBC, Discovery, Robert Greenwald, and Morgan Spurlock. As a journalist, she has written for publications such as the Los Angeles Times, Science and Spirit Magazine, and the Cairo Times. Following a near-death experience several years ago, Miriam delved into the science of nutrition and alternative ways of healing. Welcome, Miriam. Thanks for being here. Yay. So <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. Lovely to be here. We're so glad Thank to have you. you. Thank and you. I know we have a lot to get to. So first, just tell us in your own words a little bit about who you are and what you do. So I'm originally from Montreal, Canada. So I'm from the East Coast. I've been here 15 years. 
I'm predominantly an investigative journalist. I love to dig for the truth. Mm -hmm. And I am um, consider myself an activist. I'm in service to the honeybees and everything that they represent. So the bees represent so many things from the sacred feminine to, to collaboration. And they are messengers and, and they have helped illuminate the fact that we're living with a lot of toxins at least in my life they've helped illuminate that in the food supply and the products that the mainstream products that we use so i'm on a mission to help empower people to be their own best health advocate and to also put honesty in the food supply and i'm doing so with my startup which is a magazine and a marketplace and it's called honeycolony.com so it's it's colony as opposed to honeycomb because a lot of people uh, confuse it mm. as of late especially this year i've spent a lot of time traveling and wherever i go i'm gathering information about the food supply about um, pesticides and chemicals and and just like i was just in greece and and did a cover story on the situation with the honeybees and colony collapse in, in greece and so forth so I'm, I'm also have been described as eccentric <laughs> and um, yeah that's that's who I am I'm a dancer I'm a yogi and uh, I love to live a holistic life and uh, that's awesome as do we Susie and I love yes, to live do. a holistic life and we both saw your film and we really appreciate everything that you're doing and your website is amazing to get people really the knowledge information they need because there's so much misinformation out there so as soon as you start you start diving into the holistic health realm and google will give you everything you ever needed to know and more and you're like i don't know where to start so a website like yours is a great place to really like cut out the bullshit right yeah. and really find what is important to shop for what what are good products what are not good products what are good things you can do what are good what are bad things you think are good yeah. right that yeah. you can do but tell us about let's start with a film because i feel like the premise of that film and the conclusion that you draw is so important and a lot of people even though it was made in 2010 right it came out in 2010 yeah uh, it, it came out a year prior or two years prior i don't recall anymore in the uk okay and we recut it uh, we had a, a british actress amelia fox and i found it too bbc-ish uh -huh. and wanted to make it a little bit more uh, US centric uh -huh. so we recut it with Ellen Page mm -hmm. and um, I tell people because I like for instance I just had a screening yesterday in Los Angeles and and typically a documentary has a certain shelf life mm -hmm. it's not evergreen H however I tell people that ironically my film is still alive because the bees are still dying yeah and uh, I still talk to people on a regular basis that don't know the bees are, are disappearing and, and so there's still so much education to be had. However, if I look at where we were in 2007 when we first started filming, because it took us five years, George mm -hmm. Langworthy and I, um, and where we are now, I mean, just last week we legalized beekeeping in Los Angeles for urban beekeepers. Awesome. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, th that's I something. Want bees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can have that. And I have a yard now. It's actually yeah. feasible. I'm not in an apartment anymore. So No, absolutely have them. It's it's lovely to have bees. So we we are making progress. This is not like a you know the the food movement is not a passing fad. No. It's here to stay and it's it's always gaining momentum and it's just about education and uh hopefully people don't need to have like a health scare or some type of tragedy in order to awaken and i find that you know one of the reasons why we, we created honey colony is because there has to be a lot of education that goes goes with uh, consumer purchasing for for instance like we have a, a deodorant that's non-toxic well i can't just tell someone hey you can't use your dial or your secret or whatever because it's going to give you cancer people don't get it they they need to be educated so we put out these campaigns that are, are really full of knowledge so that someone understands why this product that we're selling is superior right people think that just because it's on the shelves then it's safe yeah right mm -hmm. and they and they put the warnings on there you can always read them 
and you can look up the ingredients, ingredients. that are that are toxic yeah. that do Aluminum. cause cancer mm-hmm. and pe- but people kind of turn a blind eye you know they just want to have tunnel vision and be like no no it's on the sel- the shelf it must be safe for me yeah, yeah. so th- there has to be also an approach i guess in in you can't tell someone what to do you you have to just kind of either lead by example and be the change as i say or just present emphasis them. on B. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Always emphasis B, on the B. <laughs> <laughs> but I find you can't like, um, like recently I was, um, I, I I went on a date and I went into the guy's bathroom and and he had like the, he had the bath uh, like poison poison for cleaner cleaner for, you know taking the mold out in the shower where mm. he so it was like hey, you know I wouldn't. I, I would remove that if I were you or you know I had to tell him about his the milk that he's using that's full of like hormones and yeah. antibiotics and and I actually dumped it out into the sink yeah good and for you yeah but it was back there you know in a week so it's it's like yeah it's it's you have to just kind of do it slowly and someone has to be open to it because mm-hmm. they don't get it necessarily yeah it takes time to it's like leading by example and hoping that you know the people that matter will follow yes but tell us really about for anyone who hasn't seen this film or doesn't know exactly the connection between the honeybees the environment the food system everything like that tell us a little bit about that without giving everything away because we want you to go see the film if you haven't seen it it's on netflix right yes and um it's on itunes as well okay great so they can purchase it on itunes yes okay So, in a nutshell, um, we follow two beekeepers, two commercial beekeepers, and through their eyes, we learn about colony collapse disorder, which very much started as a mystery, and uh, find out about the bees pollinate one in every three bites of the food that we eat, which is something I personally, when I started, didn't know all of this about honeybees. I didn't know. Most people don't. No. So one third of the food that we eat yes. is because of the bees, because yes. of pollination. Everything from avocados to zucchinis um, are because of the bees and their pollination skills. And there are obviously a lot of other pollinators that are also dying. It just so happens that honeybees are kind of like the poster insect because... They're really good at their job. Yeah. It's they're... either, I mean, from your <laughs> film, it's either plants are pollinated either from the wind, which is completely happenstance it's just random or the bees which very specifically go to you mm-hmm. know specific plants and flowers and 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 this was astounding this is a fact i remembered from watching your film that they can visit up to a hundred thousand flowers a day yeah that's a lot of work that's a lot of a pollination lot. <laughs> so they are bringing they are literally you know pollinating plants and allowing yes. reproduction and fruit yes and vegetables uh, however there are native bees that are also dying there's bats that pollinate there's wasps that pollinate there, there's hummingbirds there's uh, you know there's a lot of other pollinators that are also dying just just to mention just to mention that so, so the bees don't get all the credit but they get no, a good portion they get of it. the the main credit mm-hmm. in my book <laughs> um and so through them, we, we learned that these new fangled pesticides, systemic pesticides, which are either entrenched in the soil or seeded on the, on, on the coat, coated on the seed, so it uptakes into the plant, so the plant itself is, is poisonous. So these new types of pesticides, which are nicotine-based, they're neurotoxins, are at the root of colony collapse disorder. They compromise the immune system of the bee, and so then they fall prey to the viruses or the fungus. They become weaker. So there's a lot of, in the media, constant, um, I guess, people that are hired to dissuade from the chemicals. Right. And uh, I've written articles trying to set the record straight. With that said, yes, those variables do hamper the bees. But at the root cause is the fact that they don't have a bolstered immune system. Um so through the bees, I, it opened my eyes to so many things in, in our food supply. And, and obviously it permeated into just everything, just big pharma, big, big ag, uh, the big corporations, so on and so forth that care about the bottom line. And, and even today, these systemic pesticides are still legal because they make so much money. Right. So the connection between... The pesticides are toxic to the bees. 
and that makes the bees disappear. Is that accurate? Well, what, what happens is that the bees pollinate the nectar. They take back the nectar and the pollen back to the hive. Right. Um, what is insidious about these systemic pesticides is that they have sublethal effects. So they will store it in their... They'll store it, and, and bees are constantly regenerating. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't affect the immediate generation, but... The, it takes time. Uh, yeah, it takes time. And uh, so then what happens is that they kind of get Alzheimer's, they, they, their, their navigational capabilities are impacted, their, their brains. I mean, imagine you're, they're flying in a monoculture where everything looks the same, and they just can't make it back home. And we say in the movie that one bee cannot live without her hive for more than 24 hours, mm-hmm. um, which puts things in perspective. When I've researched bees, actually before we even met you, I was astounded at how intricate and how beautiful their whole working, their whole colony and how they work and how, like, I, I dare say I, how intelligent the whole system is. I mean, even with their, um, they have medicine. They heal themselves. They, I, when I learned about that from, like, royal jelly and propolis mm-hmm. and what was, um, bee pollen, yeah, mm-hmm. they have a way of, they're completely self-contained. They don't need anybody's help. <laughs> and and it's a really fascinating part of nature, and they're medicinal and for humans. And they are, yes. and it's so tragic that this is what's with what what is happening to them because we've our pesticides, our chemicals have found a way to just annihilate their system of healing, their med- their medical system. Dare I say that? But. Yeah, because uh, because the honey, the 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 pollen is is all um, toxic now, unless you know the source where it's coming from. They found. I'm not going to be exact on the number, but let's say like 75 different pesticides or chemicals in one one small grain of pollen. Mm. So wow. just to to show how these these chemicals synergize and, and how they bees have been called flying dust dust mops because they really can canvas the environment mm-hmm. and indicate what is out there. So they, essentially they can spread health or they can spread disease, essentially. And it's not disease of you're getting a disease, but it's you are getting these ingested into your system, these toxins. Is that is that accurate? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, no one really asks the question about what what is in the honey. Um but definitely the bee pollen and I mean I would I so much of our food you have to know where where it comes from because mm-hmm. god knows what it's what what's in it um so let's get political right now a little bit we okay. never do this on the show <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> what's, what's coming Susie? <laughs> well i just i get angry because you know the people that are sp- our government who is supposed to protect us and sets up these laws is in bed with pesticide companies with monsanto with big pharma big agra um, and they allow these to be used, and yes, we get it, so that they can have plentiful food. But they're they're not understanding that we're eating it, and it's toxic, and it's and causing then, us debilitating diseases. Right, and then and they get the FDA to say, well, a certain amount of toxin, this amount is okay, and it's like, no, it's really not. Yeah, it's really not because it builds true. up in your body. Right. Your body doesn't know what to do with it. It sucks it in in your liver, and then things go awry. Yes, and our, we're we're sicker than we've ever been before. Yes, as absolutely. I mean. Uh, that's a good segue into autoimmune disorders. Next up, we're going to hear Miriam's own experience with autoimmune and her tips for anyone who is diagnosed with an autoimmune disease and also natural alternatives to antibiotics and why antibiotics really aren't going to work for you. And she's going to tell us everything why and we're going to try out some of her products. So I'm really excited about that. We'll be right back. Food Heals Nation, are you looking to eat a more organic, plant-based diet but are afraid of the cost and clueless about recipes that actually taste good? Do you want to learn the secrets to eating food that tastes amazing, helps the planet, heals your body, and doesn't break the bank? Then check out the Eco Vegan Gal's new ebook, Healthy Organic Vegan on a Budget. In the book, Whitney divulges the secrets and strategies to saving money while still buying organic, nutritionally dense food as well as shares recipes on how to cook delicious plant-based meals for yourself and your family. Use the discount code FOODHEALS and get a free copy of the ebook when you buy a Food Is My Healthcare t-shirt. Check it out at veganebook.com forward slash foodheals. We love her book and we know you will too. 
Have you ever thought about leaving it all behind? The job, the monotonous routine, the nagging feeling that you could be doing something more with your life? If yes, you'll love this year's top-rated solo travel memoir, Will Travel for Vegan Food, a young woman's solo van-dwelling mission to break free, find food, and make love, written by Kristen Lajeunesse. In it, Kristen shares her real-life journey of quitting her job, ending a long-standing relationship, selling or donating almost everything she owned, and moving into a renovated van in an effort to eat at and write about every vegan restaurant in the U.S. Two years, 48 states, 547 restaurants, and more than 39,000 miles later, Kristen completed her mission. Pick up a copy of her inspiring journey to read stories about the people she met, the places she visited, and even some risque adventures along the way. Now 50% off using discount code EATCLEAN, spelled E-A-T-C-L-N. This is an exclusive discount to Food Heals listeners. Visit veganpublishers.com and get your book today. You're listening to the Food Hills Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. All right, Food Hills Nation, we're back with Miriam Hinane, director of the documentary The Vanishing of the Bees, which film star called the most important documentary film since An Inconvenient Truth. And she is also owner of HoneyColony.com, whose mission is to unite the growing number of people adopting healthy lifestyles and seeking to cut through the hype and claims about natural products and remedies. With a little help from leading experts and top-notch journalists in the field, community wisdom determines what works and what doesn't. So Miriam, can you tell us a little bit about your experience with autoimmune disease and some tips to prevent and to really get over these diseases? Yes, absolutely. I'll start by saying, I like to say that they're conditions as opposed to disease that makes it seem so finite. Uh, But in my situation, and in a lot of situations with autoimmune, there's usually a trauma that occurs. So in my situation, I was outside of the now defunct Bodhi Tree, which is a metaphysical bookstore. I love Bodhi Tree. That was my happy place. So that was a bookstore, a spiritual bookstore in Los Angeles that's no longer. Yeah, it was my happy place too. I know. We were probably all there at the same time before we knew each other. (laughs) Uh, I saw Robert Downey Jr. there one day. You know, you know, just a little segue. When when you walk in to the Bodhi tree, there would be all the chimes. Mm -hmm. So he had a thing, and and, because he used to go there often, they told me whenever he'd go in, he'd like like, (laughs) always ring all the all the chimes. Oh, cool. So I was. having coffee at earth cafe and basically went to cross the street and was hit by a ford explorer and dragged um about 50 feet into oh the adjacent God. crosswalk the, the driver was going 45 miles an hour and i'm smiling now but it's so wasn't funny <laughs> no in that little stretch of area you should oh. not be going no, that's that insane. fast insane it's a no. very small one lane, you know. I'm so sorry. That's terrible. but as a as a consequence, now so there is a sign for pedestrians, and I could say that I helped make that happen. I bet because it's all you. crosswalks yeah. right yeah. there. It's like a it's yeah. that section There's of like Melrose. There's like two or three of them at least. Yeah, exactly. You have to drive slow through yeah. there. So oh. so as a result, I broke um, five ribs, my tailbone, my. L1 and I broke my femur and I had a metal mm. rod put in my leg and as a Canadian that was raised with health as as, as a right you know yeah. uh, health insurance I should say uh, I had a r- rude awakening they didn't even give me physiotherapy in any mm. case my body was in fight or flight for a long time and and after that not you know just putting aside the fact that I had to learn to walk again and mm. um, yoga really helped me uh that i i developed a whole host of issues with my body so fast forward this is what i believe uh fast forward after making the film uh we were in dominican republic for an environmental film festival and were you back to health at this point or what what i i feel i want to hear about the journey of getting oh god there. i want to my nickname is mimi and I, i've told myself that i would write a book called Mimi's Medical Mishaps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you want to come like, back and tell us the story as a separate show? 
Yeah, okay. I can make you cool. roll on the floor. From... <laughs> and uh, antibiotics does play a big part of the, okay. the atrocities that have happened to me. But, but uh, you know, just infections, ovarian size cysts, mm. like just one thing after the next. So okay. in any case, uh, no, my health has never been back, but, it, but I did do an ayahuasca journey that helped me immensely with my health oh my god i so want to do that allison we should do it what oh, is that tell me everything uh, I, I, do you ayahuasca. not know about ayahuasca it's no a, is it the australian walkabout no because <laughs> no. i want to do that too by the way i don't no. know about the australian walkabout no it's a peruvian medicine it's uh-huh. it's called the vine of the dead it's actually two different plants uh-huh. that are mixed together and it's it's a journey and it's ceremonial I know what this is. I it's illegal in it's the a U.S. Dr- Did it's you basically do it? in yeah. the U.S. considered a drug that's like mind opening, right? right. Yeah, and okay. I take offense at anyone who says like even Russell Brand has mentioned that it's a drug. No, it's a medicine. It's not a drug. Okay, it's definitely medicinal, and uh, it's hard work. I mean, you're purging and. And people throw up and they cry. Yeah. Okay, I have heard yeah. about this. Okay, tell so, me everything. So, so basically, <laughs> it, it helped a lot with my with my health. Yeah. And uh, however, my body was in fight or flight. And here I was at this environmental film festival, and um, there was it was the last day I was going to the film festival. We were my partner and I were um, in a hotel, uh, sorry, in a condo in a, that that we were renting, and so mm-hmm. the, they were spraying long story short they were spraying pesticides between two homes and they were fumigating for i think mosquitoes and where you were staying yeah and i went to, to tell him to shut the f up because there was <laughs> i thought it was a leaf blower and in that moment he turned around and he was wearing like a pack on his back and a gas mask and it was windy and i took a so whole it wasn't whiff. a leaf blower it definitely was not a leaf blower no, and then, in fact, he went to the front of the house and he turned it off and it was just leaking the poisons. Oh, And I was my like, God. Um, you know, stop. Like, I was trying to, to gather my Spanish and, 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 and then the owner came and she thought it was very bizarre and we're like, why is this chick going cuckoo? Um, so fast forward, like three months, four months later, I lost all my strength. I couldn't even go up the stairs. I was in horrible, horrible pain, connective tissue every everywhere mm. and thought okay well maybe it's my thyroid and went and they they're like you have markers for lupus and you definitely have fibromyalgia and they were like here's the antidepressant you know we can put you on steroids and like no 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 and so some of the things that i say that will help is one and i was already doing this but anyone who has an autoimmune condition if you are eating wheat mm-hmm. you need to stop one morsel of gluten can trigger an inflama- inflammatory reaction all over the body. Wow. Chances are it, it eats up your villi, and what happens is that it, it erodes your the protective villi, the, you know, what takes the nutrients. The epithelial cells in your intestines. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what happens is that the food, then the, the barrier, the food crosses into your bloodstream, and you develop leaky gut, um, of course, if you've been on antibiotics, that just uh, adds to it. Mm. So anyway, um, there's a great book, Wheat Belly. The he's a cardiologist. He goes into it as to why my we husband eat. loved that book. It's really a great book. loved that book, and and he d- he followed it for a good long time, and then of course fell off the wagon. But he constantly is like, I got to get rid of the wheat. He lost a lot of weight. He um, felt better when he followed the wheat belly diet. It like explained so much to him. It's well, a great book. The scary thing is that people think, okay, I want to be healthy. I'll choose wheat over white, but they don't realize the health consequences of that are just as bad, or maybe worse, depending on you know your physicality System. and your biology and what was put in that wheat. And the first time I found out about this was, you know, way back in the day when I was just starting to discover this alternative medicine and this vegan, vegetarian, healthy lifestyle. And I had a chiropractor and his wife did allergy food testing. And she said, you are severely allergic to wheat and and dairy. 
And I said, well, wheat is good for me, and I don't eat white bread, thank you very much. <laughs> All proud of myself. And I said, and milk does a good a body good, and goodbye. <laughs> okay, that was my attitude. And it took a long time for me. They sent me some books. I kept going because they were helping me with like acupuncture and chiropractic, and they just so happened to do the nutritional testing. But it took a long time for me to realize that wheat wasn't the health food that it was touted to be, and of course, along with dairy. And so a lot of people have no idea the way that their body is reacting to those things. And that book sounds really good. Well, that book, and I'm completely paraphrasing what my husband told me it was about, so you correct me if I'm wrong, but he told me that it was the wheat we eat nowadays is not the wheat that our ancestors ate, that what people lived off of for entire winters, that back uh, around the Great Depression, there was a, they did a cross-pollination. The guy actually won a Nobel Prize they for it. They hybridized it. Hybridized it, something with a dwarf. It was a dwarf version, or that's what they yes. called it. And they hybridized the wheat, and that resulted in a wheat that we cannot Digest, process. Yeah. So it's fake food. It's basically, it started off, let's say, the original old wheat, ancient wheat, started, let's say, with 13 chromosomes, and now it has, like, 48 chromosomes, and your body's like, what the fuck is this? I don't know what to, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to process it. It doesn't really have any nutritional values. It's interesting because, let's say, in Italy, they're very much about the Mediterranean diet, and they're very much about their grains, uh, but even in Italy, for instance, there's growing numbers of celiac because the bread is processed Mm -hmm. so it causes inflammation one one slice of toast of bread is equal in sugar to Mm -hmm. i don't it's been a while but there's tons of sugar two teaspoons two tablespoons of sugar is one uh, one slice of bread Mm -hmm. so why are you eating it and i've spoken to people who are actually have blogs and and twitter handles and are helping other young people who have autoimmune who've told me well i'm not going to give up my bread Mm -hmm. and i just think that's silly that's just silly because what what nutritional value is that bread giving you zilch it's it's keeping you inflamed it's it's uh, compromising your intestinal gut so also dairy most people that have autoimmune are are allergic to dairy yes so I personally don't do dairy. I don't do sugar cane. I don't do wheat. Uh, I am Egyptian, so those are not skinny people. Uh, <laughs> when I was 26, I, I weighed maybe 138 pounds. I weigh now 106 pounds, and I've kept it off. Mm-hmm. And it's because of not eating that. I do, I'm a big proponent of eat for your own body. What do you think about the sprouted breads, the Ezekiel breads? Are those okay or do they fall into that same category? What's your opinion? For, for me, it fall, falls in the same category. Uh, it took me a long time. You know, I tested it because it's nice to eat bread every mm-hmm. once in a while, especially when you're in France or you know, just yeah. gobble. But I think it's it's the same thing. And I, honestly, the same thing would be with all the gluten-free products to keep them yeah. in moderation. They have a lot of other things like potato starch or whatever else fillers they put in. And, and, and if, you know, there's a lot of unhealthy vegetarians that just chow down on a Absolutely. shitload of bread. And I, I don't think that... And pasta. Yeah, or yeah. pasta. And that, that doesn't help. Um, so that's my opinion. If you're not allergic, then, you know... Like, I know people who are not allergic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they've gained weight since they've been eating a lot of bread, but that's, you know. As far as I know, it's wheat, barley, and rye that were the ones that were messed mm-hmm. with genetically. Yes. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so I wanted to mention for people who have autoimmune condition, there are things that they can do. Obviously, diet and eating, you know, if you have Hachimoto's or any other, I, I highly recommend. Uh, Michelle Corey's book called The Thyroid Cure Mm -hmm. and she cured herself of her autoimmune um, condition in in my case I know that I have to detox my liver that it's it's sluggish but anyway so speaking about low dose naltrexone so LDN as it goes was uh, it's an opiate blocker and it was used on people who were heroin addicts Mm -hmm. so a lot of the people that were heroin addicts, uh, some of them, I should say, had HIV, mm-hmm. and so the doctor that a doctor that was administering it noticed that that their immune system was getting bolstered, so he found it quite interesting and then applied it to people with autoimmune 
across the board. Wow. So I had a friend, my neighbor, my old neighbor, had debilitating colitis that would send her to the hospital. Yes. She'd be pooping blood. Oh. It was horrible. Horrible. She had a um, remission. I mean, she was eating pizza. I mean, she went crazy and then started <laughs> eating stuff that she shouldn't be eating. But she told me about it, and I really needed a solution. And it reminds me of kind of the film Awakenings. Yes. Where, where y- you have this respite and you're like normal again. Mm-hmm. However, LDN um, doesn't last. It's not, it's kind of like a band aid mm-hmm. and it will give you back your life. In, in my case, it gave me back my life in, in a lot of ways. I could go back to yoga and I could go back to exercising and not being in this pain because mo- a lot of people that. Um, I guess I'm different. A lot of people that have fibromyalgia don't want to be, for instance, touched. Like I love strong acupressure massage mm-hmm. from at the Korean spa, mm-hmm. but most people can't handle it. Most people are not active, um, whereas I, I need to exercise, and I, I, it's That's it's vital yeah. to me. So it's, it's helped me. So LDN. Um, the patent ran out, so that's why nobody has heard about it because big pharma can't make money off of right. it. It's not expensive. You just need to find a doctor that can give it to you. Okay. Um, How do you take it? It's a pill. Mm-hmm. You take it at night. The only uh, side effect which fades is vivid dreams, which, hey, hmm. is not that bad of a... I love vivid <laughs> dreams. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad of a, of a, of a side effect. So I was taking it for a good two years, and then it's now lost its efficacy. Uh, that's one thing. Another thing I do is I do um, intravenous glutathione. Mm-hmm. So that's huge as far as detoxing because people with autoimmune have a sluggish. Uh, they they're not able to properly detoxify. Right. And I think it's it's also a sign of the times because we're fucking bombarded. Bombarded. With so many yeah so many um, chemicals so doing intravenous glutathione how often do you do that it's expensive Mm -hmm. so I can't do it as long I I would do it every week Um, so I didn't do it for four months because I was gone I had a cream that I that Mm -hmm. I got but the cream wasn't as As effective. effective okay and then also I would say number one do a really thorough panel of your t3 your tsh your t4 and instead of taking a synthetic thyroid medication uh, what i do is take i go to a compound pharmacy and it's a special t3 t4 ratio specific to me because Mm -hmm. we're all different and to keep it monitored and, and to change it and again i would highly recommend michelle corey's book uh thyroid cure i've invited her to sit on our panel at honey colony and uh, I hope to be working with her because, I mean, this woman has cured herself. That's awesome. And in my case, looking at my labs, I know that it's, uh, it's a matter of, um, of, of toxins, overload of toxins. And, and, and that's why she also mentions it as a condition and not a disease. Love that. Because Western medicine will say, oh, sorry, we don't know, we don't know what to do for you. And they act like it will never go away. Yes, exactly. And you don't have a choice and this is it. There's no cure. But that is not the case. Well, that's no. the difference, and I say this, I've said this before, it's the difference between curing and healing. Yes. Healing is allowing your body to take over and fix itself given the yes. what it needs. Yes. And curing is just an external medical professional trying to fix everybody with that issue with the same exactly. regime yeah. exactly I, I find that western medicine is so compartmentalized and having had this accident and I think they didn't give me physiotherapy excuse me because I didn't have insurance mm-hmm. uh, but that's crazy like yeah. to, to, to have a, a metal rod in your leg and not say hey you need physio so through that accident, I really opened my eyes and I, I really jumped down the rabbit, the endless rabbit hole of alternative medicine and really educated myself about food. And I mean, I grew up in the 70s. I worked at McDonald's. That was my first job. Wow. Uh, I ate McDonald's. <laughs> it, was, it was down the street from our, from our college. So we would go there on a regular basis. Yeah. You know, so I was a product of, of growing up with Coca-Cola and Doritos and all that shit food that that i personally don't touch yeah anymore at all uh not even to clean my toilet with it so (laughs) (laughs) so um 
there is hope that's my point my point is if you have an autoimmune condition there, there is hope you can get tools you can improve it's not going to be overnight mm -hmm. it's not like a you know cure-all but but it's way better than taking an antidepressant yeah i mean I, I think that they have their place but as a last resort yeah and uh, then we can talk about natural antibiotics um at, at honey colony we cover colony collapse mm -hmm. in depth and cover the bees but we also cover human colony collapse and, and so when i say that i'm talking about the very real epidemic all over the world that has to do with antibiotic resistance where we live with superbugs mm -hmm. that antibiotics do not work anymore because they've been abused they've been misused they've been given and still are given preventively to animals more often than they are to humans exactly that antibiotics were never created to be preventative that's ludicrous it's ridiculous and so before penicillin penicillin was introduced on the market silver was very much um, used yeah. so so the saying born with a silver spoon the aristocracy used to um, eat with a silver spoon put put their water in a silver silver but then penicillin was introduced and it was it was kind of put under the rug and the FDA has cracks down on people who are making claims with colloidal silver. Yeah, so, but I use colloidal silver all the time. And Jill Tomback, one of our frequent guests and cancer survivor, swears by colloidal silver for absolutely everything. I'm a huge believer. Can you tell us what, do you know how the, what the action is of colloidal silver, how it works in the body? I know that it bolsters the immune system. We have on Honey Colony um, a microprocessor that takes distilled water and makes it highly ionic mm. silver. So I drink silver on a regular basis. I just make it myself because it's expensive to keep on buying colloidal silver. And so since then, I have been with with markers for lupus. It sometimes attacks the bladder, mm -hmm. and I've been battling with UTIs for 16 years. Mm. And as you know antibiotics is, is is often the last resort because if you start peeing blood it's gone to your kidneys and mm -hmm. so I was on this horrible merry-go-round and have researched what I didn't know is like there are side effects that to antibiotics that are permanent and damaging yes. that people don't know about uh, I I had one incident where I found that I was allergic to sulfa and um, and cipro and it, it was horrendous. I, I broke out. I had like, you know, if one canker sore hurts, mm. I had like 25 all oh my over God. my mouth. Oh my God. And uh, it was because of, uh, I was allergic to, to the... So anyway, since taking silver, I haven't, I've been UTI free for two years, mm -hmm. which is huge for me because I was getting them three times. And in my case, they're... In my case now, I have a regiment. I, yeah. I know what to do, but it was related to intercourse. And, you know, it's not that I'm promiscuous ho. I'm like, <laughs> same, same. You don't look like a promiscuous <laughs> no, ho. No, said that. No. But I'm with the same person and still, like, have to do this whole regiment. And anyway, silver has been um, phenomenal. Uh, it basically builds up your immune system. Sex and it builds up your immune system, too. Sure. I just want to say that. Sure. <laughs> healing. Sexual healing. I think silver is one of the most healing things that has worked for me. And I grew up in a family, and no fault of their own, but we didn't know any better. Every time you had the sniffles, you got an antibiotic. And every time I had an antibiotic, I had a yeast infection. And it lasted until my 20s, always having an overgrowth of yeast. And it's horrible to mm -hmm. have that many yeast infections. It's candida. It, it's candida, exactly. I didn't know what candida was. No one ever told me what candida was. No doctor ever said this could be a side effect. I just thought it was life. And I wow. haven't had one in 10 or maybe 15 years. And I am so much healthier and so much happier. And I don't take antibiotics and I can cure my cold or whatever I have, whether it's viral, whether it's bacterial, whatever it is i know how to cure it with silver with vitamins vitamin c zinc you know i have my whole concoction and Susie and i have done a whole podcast about this yeah. so listeners can always go back and listen to how to cure the common cold but i grew up like antibiotics are god and mm -hmm. that's what you do but 
the thing is, is they have more side effects than they have cure, and we are immune to them. If you eat an animal-centric diet, your body can't respond to them. Yeah, uh, so if I personally do eat meat, mm -hmm. um, not red meat on a... I mean, not on a regular basis, but as long as as long as I know where the meat is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, but that that's pretty sad because they they and they do use it with animals, and and they're they're passing a law in California in 2018 to mm -hmm. curb the pesticide the the um, antibiotics, which is too far away. Yeah, it's way too far away. But uh, I mean, at least they're doing something. Is yeah. all I can say. There's also a campaign that I just read about where they're going doctor to doctor. And asking them to curb their their prescription. Yeah. Um, you know. And I think some are, but I think a lot of times that's all they know. That's what they were taught. It's no fault of their own. That's what medical school taught them. That's yeah. what Western medicine taught them. So they believe that this is the cure. And I've had an integrative doctor, doctor who does both. He says, hey, I can give you these antibiotics. Here's how much it's going to cost. Here's how effective it's going to be. Or you can come into my office every day for a week and get an infusion of vitamins. And that's <laughs> going to be more effective, but it's more of your time. Most Americans, unfortunately, are going to pick the pill so they can go back to their life. But then people like me are like, I'm coming every day for an hour for my vitamin infusion, right? Yes. And I'll do that every time. Please don't get me wrong. Every time I get a cold, I don't go there. But when I've had something more severe... Yes. And, you know, it's winter time and I'm just, I've been miserable and I've done that. And, oh my God, you feel amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, God forbid, like, you really do need the antibiotic and it doesn't work. Yeah. So I looked up, I answered my own question about colloidal silver. This is from educateyourself.org. And colloidal silver apparently acts specifically on bacteria and viruses by, um, and you can look this up, educateyourself.org, catalytic oxidation, reaction with cell membranes of bacteria and viruses, and binding with the DNA of disease organisms to prevent replication. So, wow. There Thank you. you. Thank sure. you, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marion brought us some goodies and stuff from her line to taste and, and uh, test. test. Oh, we're what so did you bring excited. Us? <laughs> so, one thing that I brought is a Cedar wild honey, wild raw organic honey yes. from Ghana. It's very dark. Oh, my God goodness it's so dark and luscious very, very dark and then once you taste it i'll tell you what the bees pollinate wow woo it smells good mm. it is very rich so can i bee... have some more yeah you can that have this whole so thing. good so the bees pollinate cassava shea butter and cacao i was just gonna say yeah cacao. it tastes like chocolate it tastes yeah. like chocolate you're right <laughs> So it has a smoky chocolate taste. Mm. And it's very special honey. And this company is Sita, which means grat gratitude in, oh, I in, love a, that. in the Shanti la language. Totally tastes like chocolate. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very sustainable, conscious company based in Utah. And, and, and uh, we cross-pollinate together and we, we carry their, their um, honey. And, and now we're running a special honey colony and any purchase over $25 gets a free sample of a cedar. That's awesome. delicious. Yeah, it's so yeah, good. It's it very... literally tastes like chocolate. Like, you could put that in tea. You could put that in coffee. You could put that in a smoothie. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's a natural antibiotic. Um, okay, speaking of antibiotics, yeah. And you know what? I don't think we got to this, but um, one problem with the honeybees, and I know you can talk about this better than I can, is that some... I guess beekeepers were feeding the honeybees a really unnatural diet, which would make their honey very unnatural for human consumption. So basically, you need to know where your honey is coming from, right? Absolutely. I think it's less so now, but what they do, because they're transporting the bees from you know city to city, field to monoculture to monoculture, that it's heavy. And so they strip the honey away and... They f were feeding the bees high fructose corn syrup, mm. which has been shown to have neonicotinoids in the corn syrup because they're treated with systemic pesticides, corn, and also mercury, mm. and has zero nutritional value. Right. And so in our film, one of our Simon Buxton authors says that it's it's like giving our kids junk food and... and uh, you know, that's not their food. Their honey is their food. Right. 
So, so I, another thing. I'm going to get back on my soapbox. <laughs> Stop with the corn. Government, U.S. government, I am a citizen. No more high fruct- fructose corn syrup. Stop subsidizing corn. That's another movie that we should watch and review and see if the you know filmmakers want to be on King Corn. It's so informative about... I want to know. watch that. Yeah. Is it a new film? Maybe I'm thinking it's the same film. No, as... it's probably... Mm, yeah. I don't it's know. older than my film. Five or seven years. No, I mean, I saw it a long yeah. time ago. I don't remember. I'm bad with, with uh, years. Yeah, there's there's how many million of acres of, of, of uh, corn and it's all... GMO-laden crap. Yeah. It's and, ridiculous. And treated with systemic pesticides. Center for Food Safety just launched a campaign to boycott Pop Secret and another mm. um, popcorn Good. maker. Because if you're eating conventional corn, guess yeah. what? You're helping kill the bees and you're helping kill yourself. Kill yourself, <laughs> exactly. And if you're eating animals that are fed a corn-laden diet, you are ingesting all those chemicals, antibiotics, you know, GMOs. Who, who needs it? No. It's not food. So they're feeding the cows poison and then we're eating the poison cows. How in that, how does that work? You know, but anyways, you should get (laughs) Aceta Wild Honey, sustainably harvest in Ghana, Africa. Yeah. (laughs) From hollycolony.com. It's it's very, it's very special and and, and sacred. I mean, a lot of people want local honey, Mm -hmm. but if, if it's a gift or it's a treat, I mean, you really understand how diverse. No, honey that is, is. unique. Yeah. It's delicious. I've never had honey, and I've 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 done honey tastings. <laughs> I've never tasted honey like that. There's it's... a lot of local honey living where we live, and um, the grocery store right down the street has all these options. And I've never tasted anything that tastes this good. So I yeah. will say that this is is very special. So you guys can enjoy that. Thank you. This is called Nourish, and it's a uh, organic jojoba that's infused with ozone so i don't know if you guys have come across come across ozone therapy but yes. it's really nourishing your skin and i've done iv ozone therapy yes i was gonna say that's a big thing for autoimmune that a lot of people have a lot of success with is the mm-hmm. ozone therapy mm-hmm. do you want to talk a little bit about that well I, I can tell you that it's very underground i mean the, yeah. the practitioner that came to my house you know she doesn't want to tell people her name it's just word of mouth it's it's not cheap it's expensive uh but they're curing cancer and yeah. no one is allowed to say that yeah, but I just said it. <laughs> it. It's it's way more accepted in Europe. There's studies uh, for ozone therapy. So the idea is is that this this cream is infused with ozone, and it's so it's super nourishing to the skin, which is why I called it Nourish. Cool. And it's we also added beeswax and bee pollen, and so this right now, along with the, the silver healer that allows you to make colloidal silver, is our our, our biggest sellers. Oh, so you sell the mechanism that allows you to make yes. one on your website. Okay, great. Yes. I want to get that. And, and uh, right now, if you use Silver 40, you get $40 off and free shipping. It's usually $350, and it, now it's 250 minus the 40 minus the shipping. Wow. Awesome. And, and, and the idea is like, yeah, that seems expensive, but if you know about colloidal silver, it's you know you have this this microprocessor and you make it at you make it at home all you need is distilled water cool and it's great to travel with so i'm gonna smell it first because <laughs> food, Heal Nation, food heals nation knows i love to smell stuff mm, it smells very i smell the ozone yeah i've had ozone in a facial i uh-huh. smell the ozone cool and is this for your face or yeah, it's yes for your face i mean people can put it on the body but but so it's a little bit, um, it's not totally liquid. I like that. It's probably from the beeswax, right? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. if it was hot, it'd be, it, if it was, we were in our heat wave. Oh my God, it's so smooth. It looks like coconut oil. It's like very silky. It does look like well, coconut Well, the thing oil. is with jojoba is jojoba is similar to the skin sebum. Mm-hmm. So it blends right in and absorbs. Whereas, it's so smooth. Yeah. yeah. I think coconut oil, because I used to put coconut oil on my face, I, I found it too thick. Uh-huh. And I, I it is. It, it would clog my pores. It's a little oily. Uh, that is a lovely product. Yeah, it really is. It says it's ozonated anti-aging moisturizer. I love it. 
so so yes this is this is very popular and then I'm, I've created one that we're gonna roll out that has patchouli because mm -hmm. I'm a patchouli lover and patchouli is actually antidepressant an antidepressant and is also great for the skin that's awesome since you're taking this back I want to yeah. put some on my face yeah please, please <laughs> we're taking all we can awesome where can everyone find you online and how can everyone contact you or buy your products so people can come to Honey Colony so H-O-N-E-Y C-O-L O-N-Y dot com Honey Colony not Honeycomb <laughs> and uh, if they want to follow me on Twitter it's Miriam Hanane I'm a Twitter head perfect and uh, how do you spell your last name how my, do you spell your full name my name is M-A-R-Y-A-M as in Mary H-E-N as in Nancy E-I-N as okay. in Nancy so find her on Twitter Facebook anything yeah. else Honey Colony Definitely Honey Colony. We're on Twitter. Vanishing of the, I mean, Vanishing of the Bees is on Facebook. Okay, Honey Colony is on Facebook, um, on Instagram, and, and all of that. And if people want to shop, I, I'll give them a coupon code. You can use Pollinate and get fifteen percent off. And uh, of course, with the if you're interested in the silver, that's a different coupon code. That's Silver Forty. And awesome. Um, all right, Great. we'll post all of these to the show notes so you can go to okay. our website, foodhealsnation.com, and get those coupon codes, all her social media, and how you can find out more about how to save the bees and how to live a more organic, sustainable life. Thank you, Thank you, Mary. Bees. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. That's our show. Thanks for listening. For all the show notes, go to foodhealsnation.com slash 33. Today's Tweetable comes from Miriam. Raise awareness by spreading the buzz. And of course, that is in reference to her film, The Vanishing of the Bees. If you like that, tweet it to Miriam at Miriam Hanane, M-A-R-Y-A-M-H-E-N-E-I-N. You can tweet it to us at Food Heals Nation and make sure to use the hashtag Food Heals Podcast in your posts. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat in this dress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately.